Happy Friday. Aren't you guys excited? It's the end of the week. You made it through. Do your Friday dance. What are you guys doing? How's your day so far? How's your week been? I got a message this morning. Um, I went to yoga. And so I have a message for you guys. From my yoga experience, God was downloading some things into me. And so I came on to share them with you. Hey, Pastor Lucille. Still working? All right. Keep grinding. What are you guys doing? How was your week? What's going on? What do you guys have planned for the weekend? I'll give you a second to kind of come on and then I'll get started. Good morning, Angela. What do you guys have up? When you guys come on, say hi. Let me know where you're from. Let me know um, what businesses or ministries you're representing. Um, give me a wave. Give me some likes. I know you're here. And let's get started. So I was saying this morning, I went to yoga. I'm trying to kind of get back into doing that. I really enjoy it. It's a, a peaceful time for me. And the instructor said something really interesting. Um, she started to mention how we carry all of our weight in our hips. And obviously that's something that we all know or we should know. Um, but she kind of expounded on it and she was saying that a lot of the poses that we do in yoga are to kind of support that because of the fact that we put so much weight on our hips um, we need to kind of stretch it out there are certain things that we need to do so that they are strong um, to give them a break and so I started to think about the weight that we carry in our hips and it made me wonder where we carry our weight as individuals um, and that doesn't just mean physically but I, I thought about the fact that God created us and he created us um, knowing, right, how to shape our bodies because there was certain weight that needed to um, be carried, right? Our body's weight needed to be carried. So he had to strategically build our muscles and, and build our bones and do all these things, our joints, so that um, the weight of our bodies could be carried correctly. And so I started to think about how strategic he was with that and how we actually have to be that strategic as well. And I started to think about how we're carrying our weight on a day to day. And so spiritually, you know, your weight, it doesn't have to be your physical um, weight, but it, spiritually we have weight, right? The weight of the world, the weight of, of your jobs, the weight of your finances, the weight of your calling, the weight of your ministries, the weight of your gifts. There's all these things that weigh us down on a day-to-day -day basis. Hey, Kat. Thank you, Lucille. Um, there's all these things that weigh us down on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I started to think about how we carry that. And for God to be so, so strategic and for him to know how to create us to carry our body's weight, I'm sure that he created us um, to even be able to carry all those other weights. But it's about us knowing how. Hi, Cousin Ivis. I'm going to be in Puerto Rico in August, and I um, need to, to touch base with you. Um, so I started to think about that, and so it led me to kind of research hips. Because, like I said, she was mentioning that hips were created um, for us to carry weight. And so I, I read something about hips, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, the hip joint is one of the most important joints in the human body. It allows us to walk, run, and jump. It bears our body's weight and the force of the strong muscles of the hip and leg. Yet the, yet the hip joint is also one of our most flexible joints and allows a greater range of motion than all other joints in the body except for the shoulder. So he created our hips, right? And, and he thought about all the things that we would need to do, how we would need to walk, how we would need to run, how we, we would need to do all of these different things with our hips. And I thought, okay, what about when we need to run in the spirit or we need to walk in the spirit or we need to jump in the spirit or, or um, we need to manifest the things that, you know, God has told us to, to, to manifest or walk in the things that he's told us to walk in. Um, how do we do that? What's supporting that? Are we carrying that weight correctly? Are we utilizing the things that he's given us to be able to carry that correctly? So if hips support the weight of the body, 
what are some things that could support us, right? What are some things that we can do to support the weight that we have? Um, and so I think it's important to mention in, in what I just read, it says that the hip joint is one of the most important joints in the human's body. It allows us to walk, run, and jump. So without the hips, I'm getting there, Lucille. Yeah, you, you on one. Um, without the hips, we can't walk, we can't run, and we can't jump, right? So is it possible that we're putting our weight, the weight that we have, the weight of the world, the weight of our struggles, the weight of our issues, that we're putting our weight in areas that they shouldn't be put? And because of that, it's prohibiting us from walking and running and jumping and succeeding and doing all of these things that we're supposed to do because we're placing our weight in the wrong places. We're putting our concerns and our worries on the wrong people. Is it stopping us from the walking, the running, and the jumping? Is there something in the spirit that we should be able to do that we're not able to do because of where we're placing our weight, right? And, and like Lucille just mentioned, remember that women were strategically created to give birth, right? And our hips play a major role in that. Not just how they were created, but also when we go into labor, what they end up doing in order for us to, to produce. And we were, people say your hips are spreading, your hips are starting to grow, you're maturing, they're preparing, you're preparing for birthing, you're preparing to carry something heavy, you're preparing. And so are we paying attention to that? The weight that we have, are we paying attention to the preparation that might be needed for that support, for that weight? Are we thinking about that process, that birthing process? and the expanding that might need to be done? Is it an expanding in, of your mentality, of your situation, of your circle? Is it an expanding of your thought process? Are you limiting what God can do? Do you need to expand your mind to be able to carry the weight? So it bears our body's weight. And, and something else is that it's, it's the force of the strong muscles. So there's other things that are a part of, of the function of the hip. There's things that are around it. And I'll kind of get to that in a second. It's interesting. Um, hi, Amber. It's so interesting that you have gotten on. I hope you don't mind me sharing, but my friend had surgery. And she had to have a hip replacement. And she is young, so it's very unheard of. And when when this hit me, it kind of hit me that you're experiencing this physically. And so it was it was kind of an amazing encounter to, to think about everything that you're going through and how you're having a hip replacement. And I'm going to get there in a second. I am talking about hips, <laughs> Amber. Um, but so, yeah, so there's all these things that the hips do. Right. And it says the hip joint is one of the most flexible joints. So is the thing that you are putting your weight on flexible? Are you flexible? Is, is the person that, you know, is helping to, to carry that weight, are they flexible? Is there a flexibility that's a part of this situation? Have you thought about that? I think that that's important as well. It allows a greater range of motion. So the flexibility, it, it, it allows you to be able to do things that you would not have been able to do if it wasn't for that flexibility. Do you have that flexibility? Do the people around you have that flexibility? Um, I kind of wanted to read a verse to you. And it's 1 Corinthians 12, 12. It says, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its parts form one body, so it is with Christ. We know that as, as a body of believers, that we're all a body. And, and we talk about this all the time. We all have different functions. There's different things that I'm called to do, that you're called to do. And, and all of these things work together. So think of, think of your body literally and understand that spiritually, that's how we work. And if any of that is out of sync, then your movement is out of sync. The things that you're trying to do are out of sync. The weight that you're carrying. Have you ever heard someone tell you you're putting too much weight on that leg? Or even like if you're, if you're working out and you're exercising, you're putting too much weight on your arms. Be careful how you put your weight on your wrist. There's, you have to be strategic of how you place the weight. 
So even even in the kingdom, if we're one body and we have to think about the placement of our weight, then do we consider the weight that we put on other people? And consider that not just the weight that we put on other people, but that there are people that were placed there for the weight. No, I can't put all of my, my weight on my right leg. But if I put my weight on my right and my left leg and I utilize my hips, then I'm, then I'm doing it correctly. Then I'm preventing pain. Then I'm preventing some of the things that could happen. Uh, broken bones or limbs or tears. I'm preventing all of that because I'm using it correctly. Are you considering the fact that maybe there are people around you that that you're supposed to put some weight on right like there's someone to your right and there's someone to your left you shouldn't be putting it all on the person on your right but if you balance it then it all works together or do you think that you can do it all by yourself have you decided that you're just going to put all the weight on yourself and that you're you're going to do it just you that you're the body that you can function all alone and not realizing that no that's not how it was intended if it says in scripture that we're all one body then it's necessary for you to say okay i got to give some of this weight to where it belongs god created this person or this thing or this situation to bear this and who am I to step out of my function to try to bear something that I, that I wasn't intended to bear? Thank you for sharing, um, Dana. Thank you for sharing, those of you that are sharing. I know, Amber, I got goosebumps too. And, and honestly, when I first heard God kind of talking to me about this in yoga, I didn't think of you automatically. I was thinking of just like, wow, that's interesting that all the weight goes to the hips. And it made me want to kind of start researching hips. But I started to really, you know, research and I thought, dang, Amber is have she just had a hip replacement. And so then that, that brings me to my next thing. So once you figure out how to carry your weight and how to, like I said, doesn't mean that it's all you. It means that you're utilizing every part of the body where to apply the weight to. I think the struggle comes when we're trying to know where to apply the weight outside of ourselves. That's right. It's, that's true. That's that's the truth. It's, you know, we we think, okay, I don't know. I don't want to be a stressor. But, you know, the thing is, is God called certain people to be certain things. So you have to pray about, you know, who it is that's going to help you bear the weight of whatever it is that you're birthing or whatever it is that you're carrying. You know, you have to be able to release it. You have to be able to say, um, you know, okay, God, I see that you've given me these gifts. You've given me these people. You've given me um, these different parts of the body that are going to help me function. If you put all of your weight on one thing, which, like I'm saying, could be you, it'll break. You'll break. So, you know, we talk about all of that. I want to read another part of, of my research was I'm, as I'm researching the hip. It says that um, the cartilage that is around it, around the moving bones, it acts as a flexible shock absorber to prevent the collision of the bones during movement. The cartilage acts as a flexible shock absorber to prevent the collision of the bones during movement. So if you're out of place and you're not allowing the body to function how it should function, are you now taking away the ability to have a shock absorber? Are there things that are coming towards you that are now hitting? Hey, how are you? That are now hitting because you have not properly used the body. There were things that God intended for you to utilize that would serve as a shock absorber for you. And because you're not willing 
to see how this all functions and to step outside of your comfort zone and say, hey, I can't do this all by myself. I do need some assistance. I understand that maybe I'm the arm, but I also need the hand. I understand that, you know, it's possible that I'm the right leg, but I need the hip in order to function correctly. Until you say that and until you relinquish, you know, control and say, okay, God, I'm going to utilize this body how you told me to. And I'm also going to do my part. Don't don't just put your weight on somebody and not do your part. I'm also going to do my part. Until you do that, you don't know what could be coming your way. So it says that it it, it is a shock absorber. How many of you have all of these, you know, things that are happening and it's like shocks, it's like blows that you don't know how to defend yourself against? And you don't know why these things are coming your way. Is it possible that it's because you're not allowing others to do your part, their part in the body that you belong to. So I want to read the next part. It says, surrounding the hip joint are many tough ligaments that prevent the dislocation of the joint. Wow. So surrounding the thing that was put there to carry the majority of the weight of your body. There are tough ligaments and they prevent the dislocation of the joint. So understand, maybe you have been called to carry a lot of weight. And what I'm telling you is that that doesn't mean that you've been called to do it alone, that there are other parts of the body that you have to utilize and you have to be willing to acknowledge. But understand that there are tough ligaments that have been placed around you to prevent the dislocation of your joint. So while you're carrying a weight, there are people praying and warring and standing and fighting. And they're doing all of these things to prevent your dislocation. Have you thought about that? Are you considering that? Amber, you know how bad I struggle with allowing other people to help me carry the weight of life too. This hits home so hard right now. I'm glad, Amber, you've got to. I'm here for you. It's important. And I think, you know, while you're going through your healing physically, physically, you had to have a hip replacement. And you're, you're physically going through this. It's important for you to consider what that means for you in your life moving forward. Like how how can you better live, you know, and utilize the people that God's placed in your life, not put too much weight on on one thing or too much weight on yourself. It's important. What did you say, Shaquetta? Amen. I have observed that many go through a state of paralysis that they forget to drop the weight due to the spirit of fear or numbness must overcome pride and ask for help. That's right. We allow pride to get in the way and not ask for help because we think we are so strong. And see, and that's the thing, Nicole, it's, it doesn't mean that you're not strong. It means that you're wise, actually. Because if he created the hip to carry all of this weight, then that means that the hip is strong. But it means that he didn't create the hip to stand alone. So your strength does not mean that there aren't other people, other things, other, you know, whatever it is that he's sending you, gifts, whatever, that are not supposed to be a part of that picture, a part of that body. It says nothing about your strength, but it says everything about your wisdom. Amber, Dana said that before you know it, you will be up and running. And that, Dana, I don't know if you were here for the beginning of the um, video, but I was mentioning that the hip is what allows us to walk, run, and jump. And so when we think about that, that brings a whole nother discussion. So um, it also says that functionally the hip joint enjoys a very high range of motion. The ball and, the ball and socket structure of the joint allows the femur to circumduct freely through a 360 degree circle. So God didn't just think about how he needed to create this thing, right? To carry the weight. 
He thought about how it would function. He thought about what needed to go around it, what needed to be attached to it, what needed to be connected, what nerves needed to be ran a certain way. He thought about all of that. And so if he thought about that physically, why do we think that he doesn't think about it spiritually? Why do we think that he doesn't think about everything else? We can, we are living evidence that he thought about all of it. Look at yourself right now. We are living evidence that he considered all of it. All the details. That's right. All the details before we were ever born. Thank you, Dana. He considered all of that. And do you think that this God who gave up so much for us, who, who considered all of the small details and all of these things and put each part of our bodies together, so that it could do different things that he wouldn't think about the other stuff. He cares more about us spiritually. Because it's eternal life that, that he wants us to really inevitably get towards. What we're doing right now is all for that later. So if he thought about that physically, why would we not think that he would consider that spiritually? Why would we not think that, that he would say, okay, I'm going to give you this weight, but I'm also going to give you this person. I'm going to give you this function and this responsibility, but I'm going to support you with this over here in order for you to get that done. I'm going to make sure that you bend this way so that this other part can function this way. And it all worked together. He thinks about that in every area of your life. So what? where are you putting your weight? How are you carrying your weight? What are you doing with your weight? Have you asked him, God, show me how I should operate, how you intended me to operate, and what things, people, skills, gifts, whatever it is, what you have placed in my life in order for me to do so. Show me that too. Give me the strength to admit when the weight is too heavy and I need to rest. See, that's the other thing. He gave us this function, right, of the hips and of the body. And, and it can all do these wonderful things. But then he also gave us rest. So even in us doing all of these things and functioning how we should function, he still said, and then you're going to rest these things so that they can function properly. Are you doing that? Is it possible that the weight is too heavy, not because you're out of position, not because you're not utilizing the things around you, but because you're not resting them? Because in order for them to function correctly and properly, they have to rest. I can't stand on my hips every day, all day, never sleep, never sit, and just walk around and run around and jump around and think that nothing's going to happen. And think that it's not wearing down what God gave me. So have you considered that? It's interesting. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's interesting, Amber. You know, we talk about we talked about your hip replacement. It's interesting also to consider that he gave us these hips that were intended to support all of this weight. But it's when we decide not to rest. It's when we use it incorrectly. It's when we do, you know, certain things or, or we allow certain parts to, to function out of place, right? That we wear down what it is that he gave us and then it has to be replaced. So if you don't use the body correctly, your function correctly, and, and you don't do, you know, the things that you're required to do, the surgeon, 
the surgeon will have to come in and replace it or you. Oh, but it'll still function. Amber, you had surgery. You got a new hip. It's painful, I know. But like Dana said, you're going to be walking. You're going to be running in no time. This will all be behind you. You got a new hip. Because the surgeon, he does this all the time. He replaces all the time. He creates all the time. That's what he does. God is our surgeon. Thank you for sharing, Janine. Thank you for sharing, Marie. So, have you considered that? That if you don't utilize what he's given you, if you don't operate properly, if you don't rest properly, if you don't learn how to carry your weight, if you don't learn how to function as one body, supporting one another, acknowledging one another, identifying one another, working together, you can be replaced because then it's going to become something toxic in the body. The function that it was, it was intended to do, it can no longer do. Now that thing that was created for such a great purpose can't function. And now it has to be replaced. It's broken. It's messed up. It's causing pain to the body. Amber, tell them how much pain you were in. Amber is in her 30s. I just need to, like, I need you guys to understand this. She's in her 30s. The doctor was like, we traditionally don't do this. Like, we don't replace hips for somebody that's in their 30s. This does not happen. But she was in so much pain. She couldn't sleep. She had trouble walking. There was nothing that she could do but to replace it. And so she had to do it. Are you causing the body pain? Is it you? And now everyone that you're attached to can't walk. And they can't run and they can't jump and they can't function and they can't do what they want to do, what they're still, they're still there ready to do because it's you that's causing the pain. And it could be because of your inability, like I said, to allow the rest of the body to function. Or it could be because you've chosen to take everything on yourself and you're not utilizing you know, correctly, or you're not resting. I have good news. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, I'm going to read it. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's just one. You can find scripture all throughout. He said that he would take on the burden. That he would give us the break that we need. He called us to rest. He, taught, he called us to relax. He called us to do all of these things. And he, and he always promised that he'd be right there. Ready to operate. Ready to be strong when you're weak ready to give you the opportunity to rest and take a break. So that's good news. Yeah, maybe you were created just like the hip to carry heavy weight. But he thought enough of you to think about how you would do that, how you'd be able to function, what he needed to give you in order to do it, how he needed, you know, to support your, your function, what you were called to do. He thought about all of that. He thought about the rest. He thought about the break. He said, I will take on your burdens. So this morning, oh, this afternoon, sorry. But this morning is when I got this message. This afternoon, I just wanted to come to you and ask you how you are carrying your weight. And I think you need to 
take a second to consider. Take a, take a moment of peace and of rest and of silence and think about, you know, what, what God called you to do, the way that he called you to operate, the function that you have in the body, who it is that's around you. Are they acting as those shock absorbers? Or are they part of the problem? All of these things are, are necessary and they're important. And in order for you to be healthy, in order for you to walk, in order for you to run, in order for you to jump, all of these things, they have to be thought about, they have to be considered. You've got to step outside of yourself. You've got to be able to say, wait a minute, there's too much weight on these hips. So I encourage you guys today. I thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Um, I'd love to connect with you. You can find me at www.herstorylives.com. Amen, Nicole. Praise God for second chances. He is the God of second chances. Um, you can find me at www.herstorylives.com. We have a wonderful, wonderful leap retreat coming up. I am so excited. Y'all don't even know. I'm so excited. It's going to be amazing. It is here in Austin, Texas. I put up a video the other day showing the resort. It's at Lakeway Resort Austin. It is so pretty, you guys. I mean, the view is everything. There's like three pools. We're going to be doing some relaxing. Some, some um, rejuvenation is going to be taking place. And then we're going to be leaping. We are going to be leaking, leaping. We're going to be birthing. We're going to be supporting one another. We're going to be operating as one body like we talked about today. Um, we have some midwives is what you know I would like to call it. We have some midwives, some powerful, powerful midwives that are going to be there for this retreat. And they're going to help you. There is going to be someone there that is there to help you, that's, that's there to support you, that's there to pour into you. There's a message that, that these women have for you, and it's going to be for your moment and for your season. And I know that because God said it was so. So I want you to be there. Um, we have, I must, I'll be speaking. Um, we have Bianca Patterson. She's amazing. She's my sister, and I love her, and she's going to be speaking. Um, she has a ministry called Fertile Soil as well as Pearl's Kitchen, and she's all about being healthy and living a healthy lifestyle, and she has some really wonderful tips. Um, she's going to be a speaker. We have Erin Elise out of Atlanta, who's amazing. I did a video with her last Friday, so you were able to see her. She'll be speaking. Misty Early, who is a spiritual gangster. If you have not heard Misty, <laughs> go to her page. And um, she has MLP Ministries. She's an amazing minister. And um, I'm excited to see what she's going to be bringing us. My very best friend, Relicia Brumfield, who's starting her own ministry and actually works for CBS. She's a powerful speaker as well. She's going to be speaking. Um, we have Real Talk Kim. If you didn't know, we have Real Talk Kim. Real Talk Kim is another spiritual gangster. I'm so honored and so excited to have her there that weekend. She's going to be bringing a word, and it's going to be amazing. And as always, my spiritual mother, Cora Jax Coleman, she will be in the place, and she is going to bring our keynote address. She's going to close us out, and she is going to really bridge us to birth. And so I'm really excited about that. The theme, like I just said, is bridge to birth. That theme has been on my heart. It is manifesting already. Um, there are so many people that are on that bridge that have things that they're trying to bring to, to life, books that they're writing, businesses that they're starting, uh, ministries that they're, that they're birthing. And so this is, this is what this retreat is for. It's that bridge to birth. We are going to leave that weekend and we're going to have so much um, new newness. There's going to be so much uh, things around us that you know we've been praying for and warring for and pushing for and it is going to manifest I'm telling you it's going to manifest that weekend it's going to come forward and I just want you to be a part of it um, we're going to have some other activities I'm going to do a, a writers and speakers workshop for the ladies I know there's so many people like I said that are writing books and they just need a little bit of assistance and so I am going to um along with Nietzsche Colbert, do a workshop, and we're going to talk about that. Um, I have a publishing company now, and so we're going to assist those that are aspiring writers and aspiring speakers and do like a little workshop just on that so that you feel prepared to go out into the world and do what God has called you to do. Thank you, James, and thank you for joining. 
Chef James, guys, he's in Houston. He's pretty amazing, too. Those of you that are trying to get fit, he does um, meal prepping, and I think that that's pretty awesome. So you can hook, uh, hook up with him and get your meals going. But um, so we will have that that weekend as well. I just released the vendor information. So if you have a business or a ministry and you would like to have a table um, at the retreat, you can do so. You can find that information on my page. And I'm going to actually have uh, my assistant go ahead and put that up on the website. So you can look there. You can get all this um, stuff done and secure your spot. The retreat is March 8th, Brittany. The retreat is March 8th through 10th, and it is here in Austin, Texas. Um, you will be able to reserve your room starting in July, and all you'll need to do is just call and reserve your spot, and you'll be charged when you come. And then you have to book your spot now. So if you would like to be a part of the retreat, I suggest that you go ahead, secure your spot. You can go to my website, www.herstorylives.com. Dana just put that up for you, and you can get your spot there. Um, but it's going to be amazing. Uh, those of you that are not a part of the Mary and Elizabeth Network, it is a network of women from all over the United States that have decided, I want to be a part of this movement. There is something that is in me that um, I want to give to someone else. And I know that there's someone out there that has something that they can pour back into me. I need an accountability partner. I want to, to, to be in, in friendship and in sisterhood with someone that has um, some of the same foundation or some of the same goals and dreams and aspirations. And, you know, we can help each other and we can be accountability partners for each other. Sometimes you just need a new perspective. Sometimes, you know, you have amazing friends and you have a great support system and you have all these things, but you just need something new. You need someone who is, you know, doesn't have an opinion of you or your situation or anything yet. And so this network it's definitely my heart. I've seen some women that have connected that have done some amazing things already together. They are um, really praying for each other, pushing one another. They're helping each other. I've seen people that have businesses that are exchanging services and it was exactly what they needed. So the network is amazing. I invite you to be a part of the network. You will get a welcome email saying that we've received your, you know, your information and that you will be paired as soon as there's a pairing for you. And then once you are paired, you will be able to communicate however you and your partner see fit. And um, I release different supplemental materials that allow you to have some talking points and things that can assist you with growing that relationship. And then the hope is that you'll be at the Leap Retreat and you get to meet your partner in person. So there's going to be a lot of different, you know, groups of women that have been talking throughout the year and they finally get to see each other and, and love on, on one another and leap together. And that's what this is all about. So Leap Retreat 2018, it is in March, March 8th through the 10th. The theme is Bridge to Birth. And if you would like to reserve your spot, you can do so now. And then those of you that are in the network, you'll get a special gift. So it, it helps to join in. It's going to help you because you'll have an understanding, you know, of what you what you're looking for what you want to gain from the retreat and then you'll have some relationships that you've already built when you get there so listen I don't want to take up too much time today I have been before you long enough I have some things that I have to do to finish off my Friday but I love each of you thank you so much for joining please share this video uh, invite your friends to be a part of the network invite your friends to um, go ahead and sign up for the retreat and I will talk to you guys soon have a great weekend and peace.